Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, today's conversation is about the dark night of the soul and all of the many aspects uh, that are included within that topic. It's a huge topic, and I want to welcome you to this to this new understanding. Uh, right now, though, I would like to to give my thanks uh, to uh, Amelia Centara and her family, John and Jonathan and Emma and all the extended relatives. I would like to say thank you to Glenn Ola. May yes. I interrupt? Yes. Yes. Uh, I am hearing you twice, and I am not sure. So it's repeating? Yes. Are you hearing yourself? No? <laughs> yes. I, I would like to ask um, a listener if she can hear us repeating. Please, uh, any listeners, if you hear this, if you hear me repeating, I'm trying a new system Everyone right now. Everyone sounds perfect. Hello, Lisa. Lisa is perfect. listening here. It's it perfect. perfect. Okay, okay Lisa, both ends. thank you. Both ends. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, just just, uh, just a second, Lisa. I'm going to go ahead and continue with uh, my gratitudes. I have, you know, part of the practice, uh, as many of you may know, is is that gratitude is a very important thing. And I'd like to give my gratitude to to the people who are listening, the people who are calling in right now, like Lisa and, and some of the other folks. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and, and uh, continue uh, my gratitude to Eileen, uh, you know, for her many gifts to the program, to uh, to Christine for the donation of the iMic that I'm using with the iPad here within the studio. So, so thank you, everyone. Thank you to the li- to the to the listeners in the archives, as uh, you know, you you can come back to this anytime you wish, and that includes you know those who are calling in right now. You know, the archives are there for you. You listen to it as much as you like and download it onto your to your iTunes or anything like that as well. If you like to take this with you on the road, uh, Centara, I believe, has some announcements. Hello, Chris, and apologies for that. Actually, it was on my end here. So the first announcement that I would like to make is that there is going to be a Kundalini seminar in Ireland. It's a European seminar, and it has been held in Ireland um, in County Dublin. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about it. It's happening on October the 18th. 19th and 20th. It begins on the Friday night at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., and it runs right through until Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, Chrism is visiting Europe as a guest, and on his way to Europe, he's stopping over in Dublin. So this is a wonderful opportunity for people who are living in Ireland or living in any part of Europe, really, or in the United Kingdom, to come and visit Dublin and visit Chrism for this uh, for this weekend. Uh, flights into Dublin are extremely good value if you use some of the low cost airlines such as Ryanair. And I know you can fly in there from the UK for about forty pounds, and I think it's around fifty euros return from um, a lot of places in Europe. Um, the venue of where it's going to be is very exciting because it's only 30 minutes from Dublin Airport, yet it is a rural setting. Um, the location is right overlooking the famous UNESCO sites of Newgrange, North and Dose. These are three very, very ancient sites. They're older than the Egyptian pyramids. They're megalithic passage tombs. And our venue is really right in the center of this. So a very, very ancient place. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful venue. I'd like to give you the email address that you can write to if you'd like more information or like if you want to have any questions that you'd like to ask me. It is kundalini matters at gmail.com. Or I also have a phone number. And it is an Irish um, prefix, so it's 
0035-3576. And I'll give you that again. It's 0035386029-7676. And the cost of the seminar, seminar is 250 euros, and this includes two nights accommodation with a very generous continental breakfast and you will be collected from the airport or from the nearest town um, as well. But as I say, write to Kundalini Matters if you would like some more information. Um, so that's, that's what I would like to announce about the seminar, and maybe I could do that again at the end of the show, Cousin. And I'd also like to take this opportunity... I suppose actually it's important to say I was going to begin to speak about donations and I suppose it's important to know that <laughs> Chrism is not flying around the world because he has nothing else to do with his money. He has no money. He is a guest um, of somebody in, in Europe and this is what happens when Chrism goes to different locations. So um, I would like to give you the location that you can go to if you would like to make a donation to support Chrism in the work that he does. And donations are his only form of income. And so the place you can go to is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And as I say, you will find in the upper right-hand corner a donate button, and um, you can use that. It's very easy to use. Again, there's absolutely no pressure on anybody to donate, but if you are in a position to do so and you do want to support Chrism, then that is the place to do so. Maybe at the end of the show, Chrism, I could give um, a little bit more detail about the seminar and give the phone number and the email address again. Looking yes, forward to the show. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for, for the announcements. Thank you to everyone who's joining us today. Uh, there are a few other venues where this information can be received, and one of them is Glenn Ola's uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website. Uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems, and that's the numeral one dot com. Another place would be on to YouTube, where there's uh, somewhere around there's over 260 videos. On, on the Kundalini, and that would be if you go into YouTube, just go Kristen Kundalini and that will come up. And, uh, feel free to watch any of those, including the, the two videos that are, uh, uh, dedicated to the dark night of the soul. Um, yeah. So another area of interest would be a Yahoo group at, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups. And also on Facebook, we have a number of communities, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1. Actually, I'm sorry, that's Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 at Facebook. And the other one is Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. And then we also have a, a Kundalini, a Kundalini Ashram, and, and that is also on, on the, the Facebook uh, network, as well as Kundalini Healing which is on Facebook and the Yahoo groups networks. So, you know, as much as I've been able to, I'm trying to get this information out here uh, for the benefit of those uh, who are right in the middle of this process right now. And so without further ado, I want to encourage anyone who is uh, who has any questions about any aspect of their Kundalini awakening process to to feel free to call in at 347 Nine three four zero zero two six. That's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And we do have a caller right now. Uh, her name is Lisa. And Lisa, I'd like to I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thank you. I have a very interesting, kind of a touchy question to ask you. Um, I've done, done and do Kundalini, and I've been exposed to a lot of great teachers. That have a, a lot of ethics and uh, you know moral boundary and respect. So, um, but I have a serious question to ask you. It's um, about the manipulation and control, and if how you know because when you work with the Kundalini, and especially if you're talking about someone that's mastering has mastered it, and um, how does I'm not interested in doing it because I could never do that. That's not me. 
but I'm curious on um, the format of someone, how someone goes about I'm, I'm, try, I'm not trying to phrase this question right. I'm not sure how I want to ask it. Um, I guess, have you had, do you know, have you ha- heard of such a thing? Uh, what, su- uh, such a what thing? <laughs> such, okay, such a what thing. Yeah, like people using the energy to dominate and control. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That's fairly common. Um, yeah. So- with regards to that, there, it depends. Um, it depends on the teacher and what the – if the teacher has surrendered to their kundalini and the kundalini is going through the teacher to the student and the student may, might uh, have domination issues or issues of uh, being too assertive, you know, things of that nature. And if they're overly assertive and they're buying into the ego, their ego expression uh, through an, a, a kundalini – uh, amplified, overly assertive manner, then yeah, yeah. Then, then 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 protocols are in place uh, from the Kundalini that will help that person uh, begin to understand that they are not in charge. And I also I also want to go back a little bit to your statement about uh, mastering the Kundalini. Nobody ever masters the Kundalini ever. Right. It, it right. is the kundalini that masters the individual always. Like God. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Like God, or sacred male, sacred feminine. Yeah. So, so yeah. Now, now there are plenty of people that don't have the kundalini that are saying that they have the kundalini, and then they're, they're initiating control and, and uh, other types of... of Scenarios where people uh, could 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 literally see that that you know this is not the way it's supposed to be. Okay, now right. people people have said that about me as well. Okay. So you know it depends on on who you talk to, and it depends really on the particulars of of any situation. Now because I do so many long distance things and. And the energy flows through me in such a way that long distance is really not an issue for me. Uh, I get accused of a lot of manipulation or a lot of things like, uh, you know, people see me in their dreams. And then, you know, because the Kundalini uses me as a symbol in their dreams, therefore, I am now controlling their dreams in some way. Okay, which is not the case, but it is the case to how they're feeling about it. You know, I can't, right. I can't just, I can't just throw away what they're feeling. They're seeing me in a dream, and and the the dream chrism is saying, okay, you got to do ninety push-ups or whatever, right? And uh, you know, the the person doesn't want to do those ninety push-ups, and so, but they feel pressured to do it because they saw it in a dream. And so many times, anything that we see in a dream that has any way connect, connected to us on a conscious level, we'll see as an authority over who we are. And and that will become a pressure. Yeah, I hear you, and I understand what you're saying. I think I'm thinking it, it, it's even more crazier than that, like like the telepathic, where you feel someone telepathically and you feel them in your space. And well, that's then different. You feel- that's, I mean, with, with, a, with a, like, say, for instance, I can only really comment on how I teach uh, right. people within, within the Kundalini format. Uh, you know, there is the ability to to go into a person's space. There is, but it's not given for 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 uh, 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 for you don't play with this. This isn't anything that that exactly. That it's you, not a toy. Right. It's not a toy. It's a huge responsibility. Yeah. And you know, if people have the wrong perception of what you do, then you're in for a real a real uh, ride of, of discontent and. And uh, disrespect and things of that nature. So you have to be very, very careful, always truthful, always giving people the option of, you know, are you comfortable? Do you want to stay? Do you want to go? It's okay no matter what you do. You're all right. Your kundalini is with you, and that's the main thing. Uh, That's how I teach. I give people plenty of options to stop. Uh, I always am in communication with them as well. 
and it's always coming from the kundalini source within me there's there's really you know i'm not allowed to teach in any other way uh, and it doesn't work you right. know if i decided to go into this with a big ego thing like oh okay i'm going to start manipulating lisa towards this or that uh it's not going to work it's not going to work right I, I just brought that up because I was in a scenario. I know a group of people that are in the scenario, but I'm intuitive enough to know when to pull away. And I just was curious on, like you just said. Um, well, some people need to to have that experience too. Some people come into this with a lot of anger, and it, it's an anger at their father, or you know, say if it's a male authority figure, you know, that goes to the father or an uncle or or an abusive uh, uh, person in that individual's life, and they will, you know, they will project that upon a kundalini teacher because the kundalini brings all those things up. And I hear you, yeah. So like, you could be projecting and or thinking the kundalini teacher is a boyfriend, a dad, exactly. you know, an ex-husband. Exactly. I understand yeah, yeah. completely. You know, and it's just, it's just for some people... They can go into the kundalini in a very specific format of surrender, of you know, ab- you know, abandoning themselves into the kundalini as directed by a teacher, and I'm all for that. Anything that allows a person to surrender themselves to the kundalini within, uh, by by you know, by virtue of a, of a kundalini teacher directing or or you know, giving assignments or giving teachings or you know, things of that nature, I'm all for. Uh, okay. But not for just the sheer option of manipulation. I, you know, that just really bores me to tears. I just, you know, it makes me just want to turn the page. You know, people just want to be manipulated by me or to have me, you know, perform phenomena for them or something like that. You know, I, I've got other things I have to do. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. You get beyond this whole idea, I mean, of of wanting – or enjoying controlling or manipulating other people. That becomes more of work than anything it's else. Crazy. And, yeah, yeah frank, frankly, I don't need it. i got enough to do. <laughs> I, hear what you, I agree with you. Now, well, thank you very uh, much. Well, you're very welcome, Lisa, and thank you for calling in. And feel free to call in any other time, even during this show, if you develop any other questions. Okay? I love your show. Thank you. Well, I love you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, doesn't look like we have other callers, so I'll just go ahead and, and uh, I would like to thank Lisa for that excellent question, and and uh, it does, you know, it, it does have a, a pertinence to the to what we're talking about now, uh, the dark night of the soul. Now, the first thing I want to say about the dark night is that it does not typically initiate Kundalini awakening. Kundalini awakening in, its, in the form of, of awakening it or activating it is a standalone process between you and your Kundalini, and it is the beginning of an ascension platform. But within that ascension platform, strong levels of purity have to take place. Uh, strong, strong levels of purity have to take place. And within that purification process, uh, certain levels of of fear and terror and you know the 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 controlling elements of fear are explored and are are basically pressed from us as we enter into the dark night of the souls so I do want to say that a person can have a a, a very very strong karmic uh, compulsion to go into the Kundalini and one of those uh, uh, directives within that compulsion will be, you know, severe, severe um, difficulty within the initial aspects of the awakening. Uh, you, you won't know what it is, or all of a sudden you'll be out of your body, watching your body, seeing your body, thinking that you've died, uh, or, you know, any number, you know, that your tailbone starts to wag, or your your spinal cord feels like there's, a, you know, something alive inside it. Know, is twisting you this way and that. I mean, these if 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 you're if you're not cogent or understanding of the Kundalini, these can 
scare you to pieces, literally scare you right into a psychiatric treatment facility. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this radio show and that I that, that uh, you know, uh, with Glenn Ola, we have that website and the YouTube videos are out there. Nothing, not, and I, I'm certainly not uh, hmm, saying anything uh, bad about the psych wards, although I suppose there's some room for that, uh, uh, maybe a constructive criticism. But I'm trying to keep people out of the psych wards that have Kundalini. This world needs you, the Kundalini Awakened, more, more than ever. Okay, so so uh, the initiatory process of Kundalini awakening is not the dark night, although it can seem as terrible uh, as a dark night would ever be. Typically, the Kundalini wants to to come in to the human and and begin to work on their processes, begin to see how they're responding to supernatural phenomena how they're responding what levels of fear do they have you know what you know then based upon the levels of fear what new information can be given to them in a stressful situation that allow them to test and to be purified within the the matrix that has been set up for that individual so that dark night of the soul for that individual is specifically custom designed for that one individual and no dark night of the soul will be the same for anyone because we come into this you know in in a very unique way we come into this in a way that that is reflective of the karma that has brought us to this level of spiritual refinement in the body as we are right now okay so the causation of a dark night of soul is natural it is a natural expression of the purification elements within a kundalini awakening process. It can be scary, and you know what? It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be scary. How can you tell how you respond to fear if you don't feel fear? Okay? So understand that and and and, uh, and go with that. And, and And if anybody can just let me know that that this is coming through with this new microphone I'm using. Uh, Lisa, is it coming through again? Is it still coming through? I'm going to put you on here. There you go, Lisa. Lisa, are you there? No? Okay. Well, Eileen or somebody, Brandon, maybe you can call in and let me know that this is reaching uh, outside... uh, I, I feel it it's clicking coming on. through prison. Oh, it is okay. It's coming through because it's, they're saying so in the chat room. Oh, thank you, thank you, everyone in the chat room. Thank you very much. Okay, so dark night of the soul will typically occur uh, within two to three years of the initial activation and awakening sequence of the kundalini within a body. Uh, that's just typical. I, you know, everybody's unique, and so it's going to come to them in the own, in, in, you know, in the time that their kundalini decides that it's, it's, it, it's time for them to have this. Not everybody has to have this. Not everyone does. But many, many, many people do. So many that it's, you know, this, this topic is very important. And uh, it, it is the dark night of the soul can be extreme. I've had one. I had one as a child. Uh, I don't know if any, I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I came into my life uh, as a as a baby with levels of kundalini phenomena already occurring, and this is from another life where I had kundalini, and and and, uh, and uh, this is this is a very uh, real understanding that kundalini comes with you. You don't lose kundalini. You'll lo- you'll lose the knowledge of it, though. You will lose the knowledge of the kundalini, the memory. Of Kundalini, that's the deal. That's the deal you make when you come in behind the veil. You, you know, if you're from behind the veil, you go in front of the veil, and you don't, you know, the veil of forgetfulness is a real thing. And, and you know, I know there's a lot of uh, energy and people wanting to see their past lives and understand their past lives. And 
frankly, I, I think that's kind of defeating the purpose. Uh, I don't go into that at all. I mean, you know, you can you can see uh, levels of how do you say this? Uh, you can see an energetic expression within a person's energetic envelope that will necessarily deal with a past life. You can see a past life reflection. But I don't even look anymore. To me, I, I like to take the person as it as they are right now within their process. And I don't worry too much about past life things. And I encourage you not to get overly fixated on past life scenarios. Okay, uh, Not to say that, you know, that some of these past life practitioners are doing anything wrong. No, no, no. And some of them, you know, there's, you know, they, they've encountered some very healthy scenarios within that. So, you know, how, helping people defeat uh, psychosis that comes to them from another life. Uh, so, so that's all fine. We're not, they're not dealing with Kundalini though. Okay. I'm dealing specifically with Kundalini and some of the harshest karma in the world, uh, in the, in the multiverse is, is, uh, saved for those going into the Kundalini. <laughs> It's like the Chinese, the, 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 that ancient Chinese curse. Uh, may you balance all of your karma in one lifetime. And, and that is a very, very true thing. And it's a very, very difficult thing. And Kundalini is one of those uh, experiences that will bring a huge level of karmic distress into a person's uh, experience with it. And so, of course, you get to deal with that karma. You get those like, why is everything going so wrong? And, or, or, you know, gosh, everything seems to be going so right, you know, because positive karma is also responded to. It's not all negative. Okay. So the dark night of the soul is a, is a as you come into the kundalini, the dark night of the soul will come as a form of testing, as a form of initiation okay as a form of examining from the inside out a person's response to very difficult phenomena okay typically and most often this has to do with fear and it has to do with the fear of of obliteration or or the fear of not understanding what is happening and and feeling like you're being you're being tossed about like a leaf in the wind, which is not a bad analogy, really. You are being tossed about on purpose. The dark night is not an accidental sequence. It's, a, it's an on-purpose sequence for the people that are experiencing it. Uh, when I had my dark nights as a child, I, just, I didn't know what it was at all. I just, I just had to respond as honestly as a child does, and, and that lasted for about 10 years. And then uh, I had about a 10-year break. Uh, for for uh, adolescents to move in, and then from the age of of uh, my early twenties on, you know, I had another uh, surge of dark night, and then after the Kundalini came, another surge of dark night. You could see, you could see that the Kundalini was going. Oh my God, this guy's what a mess. Uh, so, you know, with that in mind, I you know, I, as I grew and matured within my Kundalini. Uh, experience I was given information about why this was occurring to me and and the reason why a lot of this a lot of the weird and interesting phenomena that occurred for me was because even though I didn't know it at the time the kundalini was developing a teaching protocol within me and without having an ex a direct experience or an authentic experience and understanding of what it is I, I, I was being uh, groomed to teach, well, that I wouldn't be able to teach it with any degree of honesty. Okay? So I've had these dark nights. I've had everything that I talk about. Okay? Dark nights are difficult, and they're supposed to be difficult, but they are not supposed to kill you. Many people die because of the dark night of the soul that they experience. When you're when your reality matrix begins to fall apart, say, for instance, you're just sitting in your living room and the floor just falls away and you see this dark emptiness where your, you know, your feet are just kind of like you're in the easy chair and you look at your feet and below your feet you just see blackness. 
pitch blackness and you feel yourself being pushed towards falling into that pitch blackness and and then all of a sudden wham you're you've fallen through the floor in your living room in your waking state your conscious waking state and now you're flailing about in this dark dark mass of emptiness this amazing terrible emptiness and and there you are and all of a sudden you go into panic zone you're you don't you're screaming or you're yelling or you're you're in a deep 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 level of fear and then boom you're right back in your chair the floor is as it was and that was just a small taste of what's coming forward some people will have uh different scenarios uh they'll just see pieces of the wall pieces of their reality float away uh i i was i was given a question the other day from the yahoo community about the grid and have i seen the grid well i can always see the grid so that's not a big deal but this is the kundalini manipulating the grid that taking you right out of it taking you right out of this dimension and into a dimension of fear testing that the kundalini has specifically designed for you everything you see in your dark night will have a connection to you every entity that you experience every every equation every question every every kind of of uh, choice and decision uh, or response to choices and decisions that you have within the dark night is supposed to be there you are being tested and it's not an accidental test uh, sometimes uh, you'll have entities that are that are present. Those entities are sent to once again test you. Some of them will be quite fearful, you know, fear evoking. I mean, you know, the Matrix has nothing with you know you, you know in comparison with what the Kundalini can bring to you. Um, and once again, I'm going to say, accept the dark night, accept it for what it is. No that this is what it is. Now, some of you who are listening to this uh, may not have to have a dark night because you're following the safeties, uh, the safety protocols or you're a private student of mine or, or you're doing, you know, you're, you're, you're following those safeties and, you know, whether it's the safeties that I wrote, but it's some uh, aspect of the safeties. You're being very tolerant. You're being very forgiveness. You're being very gracious. You're being very helpful. You're being very loving all the time. Okay. This this typically won't won't uh, won't trigger a dark night of the soul experience right off the bat. Uh, maybe later for the person. You have to remember that just as we can feel joy and bliss and love and and all these beautiful beautiful love based emotions, so do part of us uh, encapsulate the emotions of hatred and darkness and 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 anger and and uh, violence, revenge, and grudges, and things of that nature. Those are the aspects that need to be balanced out of the equation. You can keep the love and the bliss and the joy and the forgiveness and the honesty and the truth and the surrender and all of these things. You keep those. Those those are the are the rungs of the ladder towards your ascension. But the other parts, they are still important, and they are just as important as the positivity. Yet what they are is they're they're giving you an opportunity to free yourself from the biological, societal, enforced slavery to your to to these to some of the hurtful natures that we have in our society now. Um, you know, we foment a lot of difficulties for people uh, in this in in our society, Western society. Uh, I'm just going to go with United States of America, 2013, September 11. You know, at this point, we're fomenting a lot of negativity towards uh, to many different countries, not just one in the Mideast. But we're fomenting levels of control and levels of, of hurt that a Kundalini person growing up in this in this society can see can begin to receive as a level of programming 
So if you're a child right now and, and, you know, you're buying all the videos, you know, the blood and guts videos and all of those things, well, that is a programming level that if you have the Kundalini later on, you're going to have to get it balanced. You're going to have to balance out the programming of your society. Also balancing out the programming of your parents. You know, parents are, are, are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sources of fear and love. Lots of love, lots of beautiful love, but also lots of fear and lots of of their own uh, uh, programming that they received as a child growing up and so on and so forth. Uh, the person with the Kundalini gets to begin to purify those natures, purify those experiences and those teachings and that programming. And when in that purification process, you get to release those processes. But some processes go deeper than our conscious mind can 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 retrieve some processes go into our past lives and once again we're not allowed to remember those okay sometimes you do a little bit but for the most part you don't get to remember too much of them and as that occurs that's an invitation for a dark night dark nights will typically begin to take one out of their zone of comfort with regards to what reality truly is if you start to see your floor dissolve beneath your feet and and into darkness into blackness well you can begin to understand that this is going to impact your waking consciousness this is going to to really really uh place you in a in a in a very very difficult fearful situation but you know this now you see you know this now you have the information. I have gone through three dark nights. I know how they are. They can, they, they can come over and over and over again. Typically, though, you only get one. Typically. The only reason I had to have so many is because, you know, <laughs> I didn't know what it was, and, and I was resisting, and, and um, I had to suffer a lot before I could get to where I am now. You don't have to. You do not have to suffer the way I did. This is why you hardly hear anything of my process you know i really really resist telling anybody about the difficulties of my process because it doesn't apply to them it does not apply to everyone your kundalini is the master teacher for you but sometimes it knows that you'll need to hear it from another person another person who's perhaps walked the path uh, uh before you have and this is where the kundalini will contact me through you it'll it'll send you to something that chrism is doing or whatever i don't know of anybody that does what i do with regards to kundalini counseling i uh, just i wish there were but i don't you know there isn't anybody i mean a lot of the people who are saying they're they're a good kundalini counselor for a dns or a dark night soul you know they're using demonic entities in order to i mean you know it's just a mess you know stay away from magic Stay away from that. Stay away from people who are who are pushing fear at you as a way to control you. You don't need to be controlled. It's it's hard enough as it is. Okay? Stay away from those people who want to take advantage of the dark night in a way to manipulate your life. Don't do that. Don't go to that person. As Lisa said, she has a high degree of intuition. Well, use your intuition. Be open to what your intuition is telling you. Not in a fearful way, but just in a way it's like, okay, you know, is this person appropriate for me? You know, that's that's a question that doesn't have any fear in it at all. It's all a degree of appropriateness. Is it appropriate? So, or is that person appropriate? So, uh, within that context, you know, I want to bring you into a, a DNS, the person may or may not know that they have kundalini. If they don't know they have kundalini and they're having a very difficult DNS, uh, they may just kill themselves. It's fairly common. This is how we lose, uh, a, you know, this is how we lose 33% of the people that come into kundalini. Now, of course, the divine knows. The divine knows all and, and you know, that suicide is is forgiven 
and they will come back and they will get to have the kundalini again and they will get to try again because we are all striving we are all striving to evolve okay forgiveness is a very real tangible thing and and you are also forgiven for whatever uh, intransigence you may you may develop you are forgiven for it a kundalini person that that has the dns and then commits suicide well okay they have more fears to work on and and the next life will be, you know, a, you know, a good dose of those fears that they can continue to work on. I don't want to, to. I, well, how do I say this? Um, what I've been given to do is to help people not commit suicide. Help people to know when you have knowledge about a DNS or a dark night soul uh, with regards to the Kundalini, you have power. You have power to mitigate your fear. And that's the whole point. Remember, it's a fear test. You're not there just because Kundalini's sitting back with the popcorn. Oh, God, look at that Christmas doing. You know, it's not that at all. There's a very definitive goal within it. And in many cases, it's getting rid of the control that fear has over the individual. And so, of course, how do you get rid of fear? Well, you have to experience fear. It has to take you over. And you have to be given a an experience that is so amazing to you and, and in some cases so brutal to your sense of I- identity and your sense of reality that fear is is not far away. It it, it is easy to fall into fear into these things. And so once you the person falls into fear, then they they are they are watched at, into, at, as to how they handle it. But also, when they come out of that particular aspect of the DNS for that day or that night or whenever it's occurring, you know, how are they handling their normal life within this really terrifying uh, supernormal life? What will happen is you'll you'll have the DNS and you'll have your regular life, and the DNS will sometimes impose its will and and the experience behind that will on your daily life, not typically in a, in a life threatening way, but but that life threatening is going to be from your response to the fear. That is how the life can become threatened, and so you have to be very 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 cogent of what is occurring listen to what i'm saying watch those two videos i have on the youtube channel uh Kristen kundalini go there go there and watch those those videos you do not have to hold on to your fear or become a a result of your fear i.e your death or your just you know your your you know inception into a psych ward or something like that you don't have to go that way okay you are being tested with fear and it's not anything that you cannot handle you can handle this now (laughs) when the floor falls away and you're spinning in that in the darkness and you there's nobody there and uh you're you're being uh, crunched by that amazing level of Loneliness and, and absolute abyss, darkness, you're out of time, you feel like you're there forever, uh, don't lose your trust in your kundalini. Keep the trust in your kundalini during any DNS as strong as you possibly can. If you have a teacher like me, if you have a teacher, then keep your trust in the kundalini and your teacher. You fill your dark night with trust. You fill your dark night with surrender. You allow the dark night to do anything it wants to you. You're not afraid anymore. You have that confidence and the competence that comes with confidence. Okay? And eventually your dark night is going to shift into another area where it knows that you need to have fear and the fear needs to be balanced. But you'll go into that with the same thing and you'll be able to begin to forgive the fears that are coming to you and the, and the machinations of fear. So let's, let's talk about the machinations of fear. 
a massive nation of fear is the action of of having a solid floor under your feet and then watching it dissolve. That is an activity that is designed to cause you fear. I'm going to suggest if you start seeing that floor open up under your feet, jump in. Don't be afraid of the DNS. It's a purification process. So allow yourself to experience the the the, the blackness, the void. People hate the void. Well, I, I kind of like it. I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of punches in the void, but you can't see it until you develop the senses that allow you to see it. So for you, it's this dark, scary, frightening abyss of of loneliness and 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 and. Uh, and mortal danger and fear and terrifying and all of these things and and it is all those things believe me it is absolutely all those things and some of the some of the entities that you may encounter while you're there are once again they're they're custom designed to scare you and so of course they will scare you but this knowledge that I'm giving to you is also custom designed for you by the kundalini my kundalini knows you. There is nothing that it does not know. And so it knows you. It knows you're having this. It knows that you are ready to have information. Society in, in, the, in the Western societies of, the, of this world are ready to have this information or I wouldn't be allowed to give it to you. My mouth would freeze up. My vocal cords would freeze up. The kundalini would not let me speak. That's all you would hear, <laughs> me trying to get words out. Okay, so you are not powerless within the DNS unless you need to be powerless. Because once again, if we're power, if one of our fear uh, equations is is being afraid of not having power, well then of course your power is going to be stripped from you and your experience of not having power is going to help your evolution occur by facing it and letting it go, taking the the energy out of that fear. And you'll do this with each and every fear that that comes along. Uh, yeah, it's 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 extremely effective in eradicating fear from people or pushing them over the edge, pushing them over to over the edge. I just as soon not have that occur for you and the kundalini agrees the, the kundalini yeah they don't need to do this they just need a little of information and so here we are giving you that information now if you have uh, any kind of an experience with a dns or uh, entities or anything that is frightening frightening or uh, you know on that kind of a level i want you to call in right now don't be afraid to call in don't be afraid to let your voice be heard the number in the United States, it's an area code uh, 347, and then the, the number is 9340026. 347-934-0026. Please feel free to call in. Uh, plenty of people will have overlays of a DNS in their everyday life. Now, this I did not talk about in the videos so much. The overlays occur when you're you're beginning to descend into the DNS. For me, it was I'd get little pieces of it at first, and I was, I was like, "What's going on?" You know, I see the walls are waving. I mean, you know, like a wave, like you see, uh, you know, they're just starting to dissolve. And and I would quickly blink my eyes and say, "That that can't be happening. That's not real." And then it would go back into place. You know. But then it would come back a little bit later, later and, you know, start waving again. Or I'd start seeing uh, patterns in the tiles, you know. <laughs> this is probably TMI, but uh, I travel a lot, as some of you know. And, and Amelia's right. I have no money. But people pay my passage here and there. And, and so uh, people are asking me to come to certain areas. Um, when I go into these areas, these airports, they have these little tiles on the floor 
And these tiles, as I look at them, begin to form into sacred geometrical designs that are moving. And these things can begin to move, and then you just kind of see the, the tiles can just fall away. You know, you start seeing the... And I can see this now even, but I, it doesn't put me into a dark night. It can for people who, aren't, who don't know what they're seeing. Uh, you, may, you may find that the, uh, the, the crisscross tile or the, uh, the Super 7 cross tiles that form, uh, uh, they form um, uh, hexagrams. Uh, you'll find that, that there are lines of grid work. You'll start to, to, to see the, the etheric grid. Uh, they'll follow the grid work, and you'll also be able to to, to manipulate manipulate that a little bit. Sometimes you can fall into it, and then the biggest fear is, oh, how do I get out of the floor of this restroom in this German airport while you're sitting on the toilet? Try, oh, actually, don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try it. Don't try it at home. Well, maybe maybe if you do have to try it, maybe home is the best place to try it rather than the airport. Um, you know, I I quickly came came out of it and uh, and went on my way, but that's only because I knew what was occurring. Imagine if you didn't know what was occurring. You know, how close to the psych ward would you be then? <laughs> Especially in a foreign country where you don't speak the language. Okay, so. The DNS can happen. It can overlay into your waking existence. And that's part of the deal, too. That's part of the whole fear matrix that, that is being purged from you is to lose control over your life during your conscious waking moments. It's one thing to lose control over your life during a, a you know, nighttime dream sequence. Okay. Ah, okay. Wow, I was killed in the dream sequence, but here I am. It seemed fine. Uh, but with Kundalini and with the DNS, well, it's right there in your face right now, real time. Uh, you're watching that person walk right into a wall, and you know what? God, that just looked like a normal person. They just disintegrated into that wall. Weird. You know, and you start seeing people looking at you. And they'll have maybe a malevolent expression on their face, but they'll just stare at you. And this will include little kids. All of a sudden, you'll start perceiving people doing very, very uh, antisocial behavior around you. Uh, one person who was telling me about their DNS would see, uh, you know, she'd ride the bus. And, and, you know, she's riding the bus and. She just turns her head. She looks across to the person sitting in the seat across the aisle from her, and they're, you know, they're doing something of a uh, um, self-stimulation, shall we say, uh, as they as they look at her sitting across. You know, she, 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 you know, she's just like going, "Oh my God, what is going on here?" You know, this had never happened to her before. Or, you know, when she gets off the bus and she's walking somewhere in San Francisco, you know, little kids do. Anti, uh, an extreme antisocial behavior right in front of her, almost as if they're doing it to her. They're, they're like testing her. It's like, you know, how far is she going to fall into this? How far is she going to go? What can she handle? Let's do the worst that we can do as much as we can do until she falls. We want her to fall. You know, that seems to be the ideology of the entities that are there. And, uh, you know, and of course, this person, uh, you know, is in a very sensitive stage of her development, and uh, and uh, so hopefully she received a little bit of help with that. Uh, if any of you are, hap are 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 beginning to have this, uh, yeah, give me a call or or listen to this to this broadcast or watch the uh, the uh, the DNS uh, videos that I have on YouTube. Now, if you're just seeing entities, and let's just say you're having a an issue with, uh, with uh, you know, some of the sexual-based entities. Uh, um, you know, they're they're there basically to to drain as much life force from you as, as they can get away with at a you know any in, any single point 
in time. This is not so much a DNS. This is more of a of a, a teaching for you to protect your space. And uh, so if, if any of you are having that who are listening, don't worry so much about incubus or succubus or any of those things. Uh, you can control how much uh, of their stimulation upon you that that you need in order to get away or, or, or in order to help them be disinterested in you. Their whole purpose is to feed off of you, just like any kind of a parasite. They just feed off of you energetically. It's the same thing as a mosquito. And I want you to treat them like a mosquito. They're, they are not in control of you. You are in control of you, especially during the DNS. You are in control of how you respond to every phenomenal aspect that occurs to you in the DNS. Okay? You don't have to be afraid. It is not a rule. The rule is is you have to experience it. If it's happening to you, then you have to experience it doesn't happen to everybody. Not everybody gets Kriyas. Not everybody sees entities. Not everybody has everybody else's phenomena with the Kundalini, and that includes the dark night of the soul. Not everybody gets one, and then not everybody, everybody gets one in the same way as I mentioned earlier. So know this and understand this and begin. If you're having this now and you're just, just too shy to call up, and that's fine, you take this information with you into the next a sequence of your DNS. And, and don't you listen to anything that is advocating fear in your experience. Yeah, you'll have some discarnate entity, some little being or some big demonic type being. It's like, yes, you will be afraid. And, and don't listen to that prism guy. You don't know anything. <laughs> you just laugh. He's like, no, I will not be afraid. Stand up for yourself. Do not let yourself be controlled by fear. Because if you let it, it will control you. And it can end you. And we don't want that to happen. You Kundalini people are not that common. We need to keep as much of you on this earth, on this planet, as we can to balance out some of the real negativity that is happening here on this planet, okay? You are very, very, very important people, VIPs. You are KVIPs. Uh, and, and, and understand that and accept that about yourself. You do not need to be afraid of a dark night of the soul. You need to understand that this is what it is, that you're in the middle of it, and it's okay. Let the fears go. Forgive the fears. Forgive yourself. Forgive the Kundalini. Trust the Kundalini. It may have to show you the, the worst of the worst that you've ever experienced. It may have to show you certain elements of karmic experience that you've never had in this lifetime, that you don't really feel connected to, but you may have to experience it because it is still with you from another lifetime. Remember, karma doesn't go away just because we're not familiar with it or we don't accept it as a possibility. Karma just goes, oh, okay, they don't accept it as a possibility. Well, okay, we'll just go on and help them with their karma anyway. You know, reincarnation was removed from some belief systems like Christianity early on. Early on, reincarnation was removed from the knowledge stream uh, in the Council of Nicaea in the 5th century. So, you know, it has been there. It has been there. But people have decided that they want to they want to have more control over the levels of fear and reality that people experience so that they can, you know, as, as Lisa mentioned, manipulate them. I'm saying don't. Don't go there. If you don't fear, then you're not manipulated. You can't be manipulated. If, you don't, if you're not afraid, then what can they do? What can anything do? And if you're not afraid, therefore you, you, you have reached a level of kundalini that embraces the fearlessness and the trust that a person needs in order to, to go further into the kundalini beyond a DNS, 
There's lots of phenomena and lots of things to experience after a dark night soul sequence. Okay. If you have a lot of fear. Now, I'm speaking to the women right now. In our, in our, in our, uh, culture in the Western Europe, United States, Australia, uh, Mexico, uh, uh, typically women, because of the level of strength or, or self-confidence that they may or may not have, are prone to having episodes of fear, uh, perhaps more so than, than, uh, than your typical man. Uh, fear of molestation, fear of rape, fear of being taken advantage of, fear of, of, uh, you know, of being brutalized or, or in some way, uh, uh, experiencing difficulties just because you're a woman. Well, you know what? You are just as strong spiritually and energetically and even more so than, than any human male. And within a Kundalini context, you have no reason to fear because you have the divine behind you helping you to balance away your fears, to purge away your fears. Okay? Uh, for the men, uh, great strength and great intimidation sometimes, often actually, hides levels of fear and levels of, of inadequacy that many men feel. You know, they know that, oh, well, I'm a man. I'm supposed to be this, this, and that. I'm supposed to be, you know, a strong man. I'm supposed to be brave and courageous and give my life for anybody who might be in distress. That's kind of what we're trained as children when we watch Popeye or we watch Superman or any of those cartoons that, that we bonded with as children. And, and those psychological programs have residue within our current conscious expression. And so the DNS may look at those those uh, those residues and go, okay, well let's go ahead and uh, and let's devise a uh, a DNS for Chrisom here because let's see he was watching Mighty Mouse and Superman and Batman and okay let's go ahead and do a DNS about not being powerful enough in the face of an enemy or something of that nature. Okay, so once again, we are looking at deep, deep, deep purification. Purification that goes beyond your existent corporeal expression and into the past when you were developing your current corporeal expression or five bodies of, of your kundalini uh, you know, equation. So if you're having any of this right now, and uh, you don't mind talking to it. You don't have to use your real name. Uh, call 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Call in and, and you know, let us know what's happening with you. And maybe there's some way that uh, that that uh, we can help you. Centara, uh, 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 I see another caller. Is that another caller I see down there? Hello? Well, I'm sure she'll let me know. So, so one of the uh, one of the aspects of the DNS is typically entities, and they'll come in, you know, demonic, uh, demonic uh, um, uh, shape, and and you know. Expression. They'll come in as little kids that are, you know, because they know that, you know, the little kids being, you know, we see them as absolutely pure and innocent. But when you see them evil, then it's really, oh, you know, it's like that Chucky horror movie, which I never saw, but I did see the advertisements for it back then when it was new. And, uh, you know, it's a very disturbing uh, uh, feeling for people. And so, you know, it'll come as that. Or it'll come as little evil creatures <laughs> that I have seen. And uh, they're called flesh divers. Flesh diver, D-I-V-E-R. And these flesh divers will jump into your flesh, literally. Jump into your flesh, and they will start swimming through your energetic anatomy. And you can feel them. 
you can feel them swimming through your energetic anatomy, and they can become parasitical and stay in that in that level, you know, for for years and years. And, and once again, I don't want you to be afraid of that. The whole purpose for them jumping into you may be for you to to become afraid and and through that fear to become controllable through corporeal uh, machination. So. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, you know, you have some of these teachers that are that may be gifted and, and oh, what are they doing to their students? Um, are they are they uh, manipulating them in some way? Are they are they do, going against, uh, you know, the the ethical values and morality of that individual person? What's going on? You know, a lot of the same things that people said about me uh, as they try to to uh, diminish. Uh, the information that I'm giving to people. You know, no matter what they do, the Kundalini will shine forth. Uh, the Kundalini will shine forth, and it will. It, it has total mastery over this physical realm. Total mastery. It can lose posts. It can take stuff right off of the web. It can just crash things. I mean, it has total mastery. Divinity has mastery over the physical plane. And you need to understand that. And you need to understand that kundalini is the extension of the divine into your body. It is literally, you're literally being touched by God. You're being touched by God. And within that touch, you know, there are certain purification protocols that need to be given so that as you're touched by God, the power of the touch from God does not destroy you. And it can. It can be way too much. Way too much. I Trust me on that. God is a very, 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 very powerful uh, source of this force. And, and to, have, to have it touching you within a kundalini context means that it's touching you very, very, very softly. But it's preparing you to receive more and more and more that energy. That's what the Kundalini is all about. It builds, with the chakra system, it builds a bridge between the mundane physical plane and the divine supernormal plane. Okay? It skips right over the astral and the mental and the uh, uh, causative planes. It goes from, basically, from zero to divinity. Now, you'll still, of course, get to visit certain areas of the astral and the mental and the causal plane. But here, within the context, it's very much like Huna. Like what the Huna, the, the Huna people in Hawaii understand, uh, the, the, uh, the high self being the amakua, which is both male and female, and so it's split at the top. It's like a Y at the top, and the, the trunk of the Y is you, and then the two parts of the Y that branch out are the sacred male and the sacred female, or the amakua within the, uh, within the Huna format. The Huna format represents three levels of consciousness. The unikili, which is the ego or the small self. The uhane, which is the adult uh, person, the higher mental uh, functioning person. And the amakua, which is what the uhane wants to become. The, uh, the uhane is what the unihipili wants to become, and I'm sure this is clear as mud right now. Uh, my information about Huna comes from Max Freedom Long, and he's the only one that I will suggest you take any information about Huna from. And that includes the people that are selling his books. They are clueless. They do not know what Max Freedom Long was saying. They just kind of turned it into a money-making thing. So you just go with the initial read on Max Freedom Long's understandings of Huna and let Max Freedom Long explain this to you. He does it in a very, very uh, gifted way. He's passed, but his words shine brightly in our current uh, expression. Uh, Max Freedom Long did a very, very great service, not only for, for anybody you know, expressing an interest in Huna, but also for the Hawaiian people and for the, for the integration of, of uh humanity on those islands okay uh so huna one of the main reasons i mentioned huna is 
uh, the Uhane, the middle cell, is not allowed to communicate directly with the Kundalini or the Amakua. It must go through the small cell. So if you look at it, if you if, if you write uh, Amakua, Uhane, Unihipili on a piece of paper, a J develops. So the J is the Uhane going through the small cell, the Unihipili, in order to communicate with the high self, Amakua. Okay. So this this is a very very advanced understanding of how we we communicate with divinity. Now with the Kundalini awakening, well, all of this process is kind of forced upon you. The DNS is is as much a a uh, a refinement of the ego and its fears as it is of the emotional body or the mental body or or the physical body and their fears. Okay, because the ego the ego anatomy asserts itself into various places in the other four bodies of expression. And so when you have the DNS and you have this extreme purification take place, uh, the DNS will probably draw its, its, uh, its agenda for you from your ego insertion into the other four bodies. So, you know, mentally, what is the ego? Where are the fear issues in the mental body that the ego has produced? Or where are the fear issues in the emotional body that the ego has produced? You know, being abandoned or, or being, you know, uh, uh, having a spouse leave you or, or being the person that has to do the leaving and, and all of these things have very, very, very tangible, uh, experience within a DNS. You during your DNS, as you're just wriggling out there in in the in the deep black, the abyss, you know, a, a feeling of s- tremendous abandonment may come to you, and this will be something that's given to you directly from the Kundalini. You'll feel lost. You'll feel timeless. You'll feel abandoned forever, and you're just turning and torquing, or you're just sitting, and there's. Nothing, there's no body, there's no you, there's no light, there's no substance, there's nothing. You talk about solitary confinement, okay, it's it's a pretty rough deal. It's a pretty rough deal. But as you're having this, once again, I will say, trust your kundalini process, especially when you're being tested this way. Get rid of your fears as best you can. Go out of your way to get rid of the fear. Make it a priority. Test yourself. Give yourself your own little dark night soul. Okay? Look at what the Kundalini is trying to bring up karmically for you and engage the Kundalini with getting rid of that karma, forgiving that karma. You know, you can do a lot if you just know what's going on. And, and our society does not support that knowledge. I wish it did. The fact that I'm even allowed to say this and that I haven't been jerked off the web or I haven't been, you know, uh, slapped for for giving these Kundalini teachings uh, is great. But, you know, I'm fairly unknown as well. And so who knows what what may happen down the way. But if anything like this happens down the way, what will I do? I will trust my Kundalini. I trust that divine source within me as I'm suggesting that you also trust the divine source within you. Okay. So if you're having any questions about this or any other subject within the Kundalini Awakening um, experience, please call in 347-934-0026. Santara, can you... uh, uh, give a, a another a different perspective uh, uh, in your experience with the uh, the DNS if you've had one. Okay, Chris. Uh, well, when I was listening to you, um, an awful lot of what you said resonated with me. When you were talking about the um, you know the floor disappearing, I wouldn't have experienced such visual things, but I experienced everything. In it was almost in a spatial way, so I was I I was functioning in my everyday life, but I was in that spatial hole. 
in a spatial way. It's hard to explain. I didn't see it, but I felt it in my being. I felt it in my vision. I felt it in every part of me. And how, how, how did that feel to you? <laughs> I mean, even as I say it, and I can remember the terror that it was because I was so on my own with it. It was so not part of what I knew I should, in inverted commas, be feeling. I was, it was just not reality. And I used to, other things used to happen as well. There would be sounds and things like that that I would hear, you know, that nobody else would hear. And I would, uh, there were times when I was absolutely terrified and I would have had panic attacks. Uh, fear was huge for me. Um, I didn't know at that stage that I was in a Kundalini activation sort of a thing was going on for me. Um, later, when I did begin to realize that, you know, when I had my awakening event and other, when I began to see things visually. Now, I also had things happen at night. I mean, it was all about fear. And it was all about the fear controlling me. And you know, me allowing and not allowing that as I struggled. I mean, I often look back in a chrism and I think, oh, if only, if only, if only I had had met you or had had your teachings then. But I realize now that's not the way it was to be for me because I really understand fear. And I and I understand when you say that understanding it um I had to know that, I think, on some level before I could not feel fear, if that makes sense. Am I making sense? Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, the thing, the thing about the dark night soul is that it passes. Like, when I then came to understand, to, to meet the void, that was probably when things completely, I mean, that was very fearful for me as well. Um, but it turned out as I went through it and with, you know, with your teachings too and with, it turned out that the void isn't what I thought it was at all and it doesn't go away and it's sort of with me all the time and it's okay. It's like an extension of, I mean, it's actually so okay. I can't, I can't put words on it more than that. The void is fairly cool, I have to admit. But once again, like yeah. you, I didn't I didn't see it that way when I first got into it. Um, it was just a scary thing. You know, it's unknown and it's unknown and it's unexplained unknown. You know, it's not nobody's there going, Okay, Chris, um, now we're going to put you into your dark night of the soul and oh, here's the void. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like that, so you have to really well, there there was nothing like that. We are having that now, though. People are receiving that information now. So, so this is the yeah, time. Yeah, there's such. Yeah, there's so many sensations. It's like you're experiencing for real what is not, what it is, what it is not. It's very hard to explain, but it's it's kind of incomprehensible in some ways. Do you know? Um, I agree. I agree. It, but it's it's a it's a wonderful ex- once once the fear goes and once once you know you surrender to the Kundalini and to what has been shown and experienced and um, the solitary aspect of it and everything the fact that there are no reference points all of these things become amazingly okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's a there's, there's a real thank you, thank you, thank you, Santara. Uh, there's a real positive upswing uh, connected to the DNS that, you know, the as it begins to resolve itself within you, or you begin to resolve itself within you, uh, i.e., taking your fear or, or re reprioritizing what it is you choose to be afraid of, uh, you begin to open up to the areas of the of the abyss that is just beautiful just gorgeous um i have been taken in in certain ways uh, when i started doing astral projection back uh feels like a thousand years ago back in 
the early pre-Kundalini part of my process, well, I would be taken to certain areas that that uh, that I needed experience from, and the, just that being taken, being literally taken through the abyss to a planet or to a place where I was to be given tests, uh, it was just amazing to me. Just amazing to me, and because uh, I was being taken there in 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 an, a response to a question that I had or concern that I had, made it that much safer. And so, what I'm saying to the to those of you that will be having a dark night later on or are having a dark night right now, there is a light at the end of that tunnel, but you're not allowed to see it, and I don't want you to try. I want you to stay in that dark night until you can resolve your fear issues. But know that there is an end to this. And it doesn't mean that you die. It just basically means that you begin to work consciously in controlling how fear causes you to make certain decisions and take certain choices. How are you controlled by your fear? Well, the Kundalini doesn't, you know, it knows that it's coming to you. It's infusing your body as we speak. And it's, well, you know, this person's being given a lot of power, and yet they have these really, really horrid fears locked up in their body. Well, we're going to have to get rid of that, sacred male and sacred female say to each other. Well, let's look at our Kundalini child, this this chrism child. And uh wow, he whoa he's got some really good fear handles for us. Let's go ahead and use some of those fear handles and see how he does it. And then from there we can begin to purify him in a greater way. And this is exactly what takes place. You're being given an opportunity to work on your fears, to balance your fears, to to de- disentangle yourself from being controlled by fearful people or or events okay <clears throat> if you've been raped in your in your life and it was a scary scary thing which it you know most of the time would be uh and this thing keeps coming back to haunt you and haunt you and haunt you well that may be part of your dns protocol because you need to get it out of you it doesn't mean that you don't have the experience. It just means that the experience no longer controls you. It no longer takes over your conscious choice. Okay, this is very, very, very important. Um, so look at it this way. Realize that the dark night is part of your enlightenment. There's a certain level of brilliance that needs to come from you that your allegiance to fear can interfere with and i want you to take out that allegiance to your fear doesn't mean that you you know you become so fearless that you you know you start playing soccer on the freeway during rush hour i'm not talking about that's just stupidity <laughs> it's a big difference uh, can i interrupt you prison <laughs> yeah Seems like a good time. Yeah, there's a caller on the line, Laura, and she um, has made the point that, um, you know, her dark night soul might be simple emotion and um, depression, anxiety, and I'm saying she's, she'd like to speak with you. She hasn't listened to the whole show, um, but she would like to speak with you. And maybe Hire her in. Bring her, talk bring her, her on. Her. Yep, here she comes. Let your, let your finger hover, uh, uh, Centaur. Hi. <laughs> Well, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, What's your name? What's your name? So, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> um, so I, I I feel kind of badly. Number one, because I'm extremely unfamiliar with the terminology "dark night of the soul." Never really even heard of it before, and I kind of jumped into the show a little bit late. Um, and in the chat room, I. I'm talking with another person, and it seems I, I feel as if my experience was not as severe. So I feel like it wasn't really necessarily a DNS. Maybe it was just situational emotions and things like that. How could you know the difference? Or do you just how know? how long have you been experiencing a, a Kundalini expression? Um, I'm not really sure because. Um, until maybe two and a half months ago, I'd never even heard of Kundalini, and so I'm still kind of. 
learn it. Yeah, describe to me what your symptoms are. Um, well, I've actually spoken with you before. Um, on the, are you the, on are the, you the woman in the Germany? Show. Are you? You're in Germany, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Hi. Yes. <laughs> hi. I, th- I thought I thought that was you, but I was I, I thought that was you, but I wasn't going to be so brazen. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's me. <laughs> Uh-oh, hold um, on. And so just so everybody hi, knows then. that I. That I've had a I've had a Skype uh, session with with this with Lauren, and uh, and we talked about many things. And so, yeah, she's definitely inside of the Kundalini. Okay, so oh, I know well, that. Thank already. you, because I still start to doubt it sometimes because of things that are going on. Well, just just you know, if if you can describe some of your symptoms for the audience. Well, um, I have had chronic headaches that are migraine level of pain, but um, the closest thing doctors can say is they're tension headaches. Um, since for about Kundalini, 10 years. Kundalini people can have migraines, and they can be and the migraine can be initiated by uh, bright lights or things of that nature. Um, mine, mine are usually concentrated right where my third eye is usually. Sure. sure. Um, but I've also had um, back pain from my sacrum, the base of my spine, all the way up through my head. Um, terrible back pain with sometimes extremely violent back spasms. Um, yeah, well, well we would well, it. what we would call Kriyas. Yeah, I mean, Lauren, <laughs> you're basically following a fairly classical uh, expression of Kundalini, but you're not in a position uh, currently to to really surrender into it it could be otherwise because i think you would have you would have popped by now um i think that there are some areas of your life as we discussed that need to change first so that your kundalini can come full force within you uh right now i think it's just biding its time and helping you to to mitigate your current circumstances in a way that allow you to have this uh, in a in a way that is free from say the psych ward, free from uh, incorrect medical diagnoses or psychological diagnoses, things of that nature. Uh, your pain in your spine will continue uh, until you're able to manifest the changes in your life that need to be that need to be given, so that the freedom of the flow up the spine and out the top of the head can be given. Uh, this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the show, surprisingly. That uh you know the, I missed, the, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that the the inception or the beginning activation of Kundalini uh often uh has has uh very similar symptoms to what you're describing. The migraines at the third eye, and you may even feel a bulge from the third eye going from inside out. Uh, but but that isn't painful typically. Uh, you may your nostrils may start to flare uh, really wide. Uh, the back pain uh, should should yeah, you should have back pain all the way through the lower sacrum down into the tailbone and and uh, radiating up. That's right. That's just it. Don't resist it if if you can. If you um, not resist it, or I know you're taking a lot of medications too, yeah. No, really? I'm not actually. You I actually oh, okay, took good. your advice. Um, <laughs> if you want me to explain a little bit, just for other people who weren't in the conversation, um, sure. we spoke over two months ago, and um, I was, like you said, on a, a lot of medication. I had taken a multitude of different pain med- medication, not narcotics, um, but um, other type of pills. Um, Topamax was the worst one that I can remember of the pain pills. Um, but I was on different anti-anxiety medicines, such as Clonopin or um, Xanax, and I was also on Prozac. And Pretty heavy tranks. Um, Those are heavy tranks. Yeah, and the prescriber was trying to up my dose of um, the Prozac, and that was right about the time that I had the conversations with you, and you were like, oh, you need to stop that. And I also was on Trazodone for sleep. Um, and that had just switched over from other things. So I've been on 
at a minimum of probably 10 to 15 different um, medications over the last year and a half. And, and these, after I spoke these, with you, many of these are SSRIs. And because of the well, rechanneling effect of the SSR selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors, that would cause you to have very, very severe headaches too because the Kundalini won't let the pharmaceutical uh, ignorant ideology reformat the, uh, the, the, the channels in your brain. It will resist that. And that resistance which would explain will be painful. My, yeah, absolutely. And that would explain why I have such a high tolerance and um, to medication and also that it seems to metabolize through my system at a very, very rapid weight. Um, oh, and also Adderall. I've got to add the Adderall in there. And um, after I spoke with you, um, I had my best friend since we were 15 years old um, come and stay with me, and she's been a vegan for years. She's introduced dairy now into her diet, but she's traveled all over the world and just lived among the people she's all about love she's all about she's such like an earth child person <laughs> and when she stayed with me it really was a very 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 large transformation um i ended up just stopping cold turkey which i do realize was probably not a smart decision but i was incredibly lucky that i did not have it um really too many negative repercussions of Stopping the medications. Um, yeah, remember you. You, like you have the Kundalini. You have the Kundalini, and, and I think the Kundalini was telling you in many ways, including pain, that uh, this isn't uh, the way that it wants you to go. And so it may have mitigated the the uh, the backlash from the cold turkey, which I never recommend. You always want to so, titrate and you off had even of said SSRIs. That to me. It just—it was yeah. almost unintentional. I just. Oh, well, Stop I have to say, it. I didn't remember to. Yeah. I have to. I have to say, Lauren, that that uh, you know, I'm not an MD, and I think I made that clear to you during our conversation Absolutely. that I'm not an MD, and I'm not giving anybody medical advice. So I just got to put that out there. And and I actually did speak to my grandmother, who's been a nurse for over 50 years, and and specializes in mental health, and is very familiar with all of those medications. And she said things that are that were extremely similar, if not the exact same thing that you told me. So I wasn't going into this without medical advice from a professional. Um, I still <laughs> just kind of forgot to kind of take the medicine. And um, I changed my diet drastically. Um, my friend and I were doing yoga and stretches and um, talking about spirituality and I was almost on a vegetarian diet, except my poor husband was like, Where, are we ever going to eat meat again? <laughs> so um, I cut out almost all caffeine. I think green tea was probably the most caffeine. When I used to drink those energy shot drinks like they were water, I used to drink three of them a day sometimes. Um, I haven't touched one of those in a, well over a month and a half. Um, and... I started doing yoga on a semi-regular basis to a regular basis, and um, my back pain went away, my headaches went away, yep, um, yep. my joint pain went away, everything went away, and I That's felt Kundalini. better than Kundalini's I felt. talking to you. I was 19 years old, yeah, and for some reason, I just kind of started backtracking again, and I started eating Doritos and Pringles, and I stopped doing the yoga, and I started feeling like crap again, and so I was like, okay. I know better than this, and obviously my will is stronger than this. So today was the first day that I've done yoga in almost two weeks. And I had veggies and quinoa for my meal. <laughs> so I'm trying to make That's myself great. go back That's to great. it because I definitely really backflip big time. People will do that. People but, will. It's a sine wave often. You know how a sine wave will have its its upper part or the peak or in its lower part or the valley, right? Mm -hmm. So often the kundalini practice within the individual looks like a sine wave. You'll have your peak moments, and then you'll have your your uh, your valleys, or your or your you know the moments where things are going way down. And so, what I would suggest to you is is to validate that that your kundalini is kind of talking to you through tactile 
uh, conversational techniques. And that as soon as you started to to clean up your your diet and get off the medications and do the uh, the yoga, that this pain went away. But it's not saying that it won't come back if you. Oh no, it's starting to, and that's that was my wake up call to jump back into it. So that's why today I was like, no no playing around. You know, I woke up at six in the morning. I did an hour of yoga, and I made myself meditate, which I didn't even do when I was doing really well. <laughs> and I made sure to eat very well today, and I just need to keep up with it. I just Keep going. Keep going with it. It sounds like you're doing very well. Now, regarding a DNS, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier in the show, this will a a custom design program of a Dark Knight soul for you is in the process of being developed. Okay, whether or not, I mean, if you choose to to work on your fears consciously as much as possible, that can negate the necessity of having a DNS. Typically, I'm it's for people that are holding on. I'm definitely actually doing that right now. Mm-hmm. now go I'm deep, actually go, do, doing that right now. Go as deep as you can with it, but don't be surprised if Kundalini pulls things from other you know, from from early childhood experiences or pre-life experiences. So don't be surprised, but always, always, always trust your kundalini. Forget about chrism. Trust your kundalini. Trust your kundalini. Uh, the, I know the, <laughs> I, I know the kundalini led you to me, and I understand that, and I, t- I accept that responsibility. Uh, but for the most part, it is your kundalini that you want to listen to. She, she may have you call in like this. or she, You know, she may have you do certain things. And I use the feminine for that because uh, the in the initial periods, just like when a baby is born, it is the sacred feminine that takes care of that child. And it's the same thing with a kundalini child. When you're just born into the kundalini, well, your sacred mother takes care of you. And I just really want to to give you that advice to let the sacred mother take care of you, and trust her completely. She knows you far better than you know yourself. Okay? Yes, absolutely. And I've I've been trying to listen to your advice and follow it as as well as possible. And as, as long as I've been following it, I've been doing well. It's when I start to doubt it or when I start to worry or when I start getting complacent that I start to backtrack. So thank you very much. Well, you're very, very, very welcome, and, and thank you for calling in. Can I can I just suggest the safeties, <laughs> Lauren? Yes, have you sure. Have mm-hmm. you checked the safeties, and do you know how to find them? Um, yes, I printed them out, and I oh, good started idea. reading them i have no idea where i mean that was two and a half months ago i i just started i got so sidetracked i had people come in town and then i started going through that whole transformation of basically cleansing out all of the bad crap and right thank you so so much for bringing that up because i'd almost forgotten (laughs) yeah well they're they are amazing i mean the safeties i would definitely take them out again and read them and begin to bring them into every day, every day, what you do every day, and you will be amazed at how helpful they will be and what comes about because of your commitment to them, you know. It will be an unfolding and a revelation that will just blow you away, Lauren. <laughs> I promise. Okay, oh, I'm, I'm sure. I do have, I'm so sorry, can I ask one quick question? Mm-hmm. Um I read somewhere on the Internet, and I do realize that the Internet is somewhat inaccurate when it comes to Kundalini, Um, but does it feel almost like you have little tingles all over you sometimes? Sure. Sure. Almost sure. like you have little critters crawling on you. Oh yes, they call them a electric electric snakes or electric insects or electric ants. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that is one of the phenomena. Oh, and not that on your well, skin, but under your skin. Oh no, that's what it feels like. And there are so many spiders in Germany, and they're sometimes absolutely gigantic. I think they feed them steroids. That I just have this fear that it's spiders crawling all over me, 
Well, um, okay, so let's I, look at that. Let's let's look at that. Now, this ties right into the DNS, into the whole fearful scenario, right? I actually think I knew this. But keep, keep going. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the spider is one of the insect forms that the sacred Shakti takes when it uh, shows itself to people. The, the serpent, the spider, the wolf, the tiger, the lion, the eagle, the condor, uh, even the orca, mm-hmm. these these are top of the line, uh, or, or shall we say, apex predators. Okay, the spider and the wasp are are one that comes to me quite a bit. They they also come to other people. They come to entire populations. The Diné people, and that's D I N A with apostrophe after the E. Uh, they call her. This is the they're Native Americans. They call her the sacred weaver woman, and she holds the world together with her sacred tapestry. Uh, with Kundalini, you may see ginormous spiders. I love that word, ginormous. Uh, oh, no, you I may have. see Huge. Yeah, the, the, the size, the size like, you know, 12, 13, 15 inches across. Huge. Oh, don't tell me that. Don't tell me Never that. mind. I don't want to hear it. Oh, no. Oh, good Lord. But but I had a face-off with one for 30 minutes today, and it was like two and a half inches, and that's like a smaller one. Oh, don't uh, tell me 12 inches. Holy crap. Uh-uh. No, but you have you. to understand that it's... I, I got to face that fear it's, before I see one of those. That's right. Oh. That's exactly right. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Uh, typically, Which is why I try not to kill them anymore. Don't kill anything. Try to be friends with them. Yeah. Yes, no, exactly. I know. I try. I've come up with natural like repellents for the spiders. And I've actually let them live in my house, which was like unheard of two months ago. <laughs> and I just say, okay, you stay away from me. I'll stay away from you. It's exactly what I said. And sometimes Tuki- it works. <laughs> That's exactly what I said to the Tuki Black Widow spiders that inhabited my very first meditational space. It was the only space that I could do. 21 minutes of meditation every day actually turned into an hour. But I said to them, if you don't bother me, I won't bother you. And they lived up to their word, as did I. Didn't get bothered yeah. one time. A little guy I have been bothered, yeah, have been bothered by a spider since then. I haven't been bothered by a wasp since then. You know, I had a bit of a fear with these paper wasps, these vespids. They're, they hurt when they sting you. And, of course, so we have them all over the place out here. And uh, one, one day I went into to a meditation, and I, and I got in touch with one of the queens, one of, the, one of their sacred mothers. And I said, look, live here. Be, be productive. Have a great life here. Just don't sting me or any of the students that come here. And I will tell them about you. And they have lived to their work. Check this out. The other night, one of the outside lights went out, and and it was in the evening. And I, you know, I, I didn't really. Uh, it's too high up for me to look inside the light to, to see what was there. I just reached up, and and I felt this kind of like soft tissue. <laughs> <It's sick. laughs> yeah. and I, I, I pulled my hand out, and there were like sixteen wasps, and I had just pet a few of them. And they didn't sting me. They didn't. They didn't even get up and. They didn't do anything. They just left me alone, and I took the light bulb out and I left them alone, and uh, and I was very grateful to those wasps for for their tolerance of my ignorance of their presence there. So it's very very cool. The animals are amazing. Don't be afraid of the spiders. Don't be afraid of the serpent. I'm trying all there. not to. Yeah, I really it's have. A it's a process. And, uh, get yourself a spider. No, the little spider. one. That wasn't hard. That wasn't too hard to let the little ones be, you know, and just kind of tell them stuff. But when I start letting the bigger ones that used to paralyze me when I would see them, that I was just like, all right, I'm going to let you go. You do your thing. Just stay away from me. I don't want to see you. And I started I had doing a, that. Another student had the exact same thing, except she has the spiders, like, suspended from the ceiling, large ones, you know, right over her. And uh, she'll have a, a very, very traumatic, like, dream where she's working through a lot of issues. And she'll wake up from the dream in the morning, and there's that big black spider right above her. And she knows that the kundalini has given her those dreams in order for her to work through her process. 
And so she's not so afraid of them, but she was like you, paralyzed in fear of any insect, spider or not. And, you know. Yeah, so I'm kind of like that. My well, she's doing. So was I, darling. <laughs> so was I. She passes. Yeah. She passes. She keeps doing what she's yeah. doing. It's starting to. And it's a process. It's starting to. Yeah, yeah I had heard um, somewhere that, you know, there was she's speaking about animal totems, and I know that that's a completely, that might be very, very different, but the basic premise is that, you know, when you had significant fears about different animals or you know, um, significant interactions with them, that that's probably a significant animal, insect, something to you. And I had never thought about that. I've always had a fear of spiders. And I always either had an absolute love of snakes or an absolute fear of snakes. Um, There have been a couple of snakes I just used to let, like, hang out in my hair, like, wind up in my bun and just hang out there for hours. But now I'd probably be scared out of my mind if I saw one. That's pretty um, cool. And uh, it was actually kind of cool. I, I love that, but I don't think I could have, I could do that at this point. Uh, but once I heard that that oh, because you're afraid of this, it's because you need you've got some kind of correlation, some kind of um, relationship with this, and I started thinking about the spiders. I remembered when I was in high school, I had about 10 spider bites all around my eyes, only on one side of my face, but that made my eyes swell up so badly. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that was a spider. The spider bit me like crazy all around my eye. That has to be significant. Well, right? It is. It, it is significant, and, and it... it it's significant in the way that that uh let me just go in here for a second. It's significant in the way that it's giving your kundalini a way to to uh scare you, so to speak, <laughs> if you're to have a DNS. But you know, if you follow these protocols it didn't scare me. Well that's good. Surprisingly. That's good. If you follow these protocols and anybody in the audience who, who may have a fear of spiders in that way if you follow the protocols, you may not have to have a DNS that's based on the current life uh, experience of uh, of fears. It may just go into other lifetime experiences of fears. So I want to congratulate you for doing all the work that you've done, and I want to I want to suggest that you continue to do that work. No matter what, you you work on those fears. You keep away from that junk food, okay? I'm do trying. The, yeah, yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> Follow the safeties and do the five Tibetans every day, okay? Five every Tibetans? Every single day. And that's on your yep. site yep. as well, right? Yeah. And, and go, to the, go to the videos. The videos have a lot of information in them. And so I want you to, to, to suggest to you that you go to the videos and, and you realize that I don't have a script for anything that I'm doing at all. I've never had a script for the videos. I've never had a script for any of these radios. This is all coming from the Kundalini. Mm -hmm. It's all from the Kundalini. And so it's coming from that source to your source and to the source of everyone who is listening to this program. Okay. Um, Lauren, thank you for calling in. Uh, Centara, could you go ahead? Thank you so much for your help. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, you had some things that you wanted to say towards the end of the show, Tintara. I did, Chris, and I just wanted to give a quick recap on the, the seminar that's happening in October in Dublin. Um, the Kundalini Awakening Seminar will be led by CRISM. It's on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of October. It begins on the Friday night at 7 o'clock, and it runs through until Sunday at 4. And everybody is most welcome to attend. And if you want any, de- you know, to, if you want to know more about it, please drop me a line to Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com, or also you can ring me on zero zero three five three oh eight six oh two nine seven six seven six, 
and I will help in any way that I can with your inquiry. Um, it's going to be, uh, the venue is 30 minutes from Dublin Airport in a beautiful setting in the Boyne Valley, which is rich in megalithic passage tombs, and it's a fantastic setting for a Kundalini Awakening seminar. So please get in touch if you have an interest, and we can communicate about it. Thanks, Chris. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Amelia, for making that announcement. Uh, also, I would like to to open my email box to anybody that may have an issue or a question about their Kundalini awakening experience, and that email is K as in Kundalini Fire F I R E F O R A L L K Fire for All at Yahoo dot com, and uh, I invite any of your questions or inquiries, and I'll try to get back with you as quickly as I can. In the meantime, I will suggest that people go to YouTube uh, or go b back here to Blog Talk Radio and listen to the previous conversations. Uh, there's a lot of information in there for them. Listen to them over and over and over. This is this is one of the things that that with the Kundalini that comes through when I when I write an article, it writes the article, and it gives certain levels of information that that you won't hear the first time through. You'll only hear it the second or third time through. So just just realize that and know that and and uh, give these resources a try. They're not going to cost you anything. A lot of these other kundalini practitioners, shall we say, or teachers, they'll charge you a lot of money. One of the things that, that, uh, that kind of spurred me into doing this was I didn't have any money when my kundalini came up. I was living on the street. I was a homeless person. So I didn't have, even if there was an Internet, which there wasn't, and, there, and even if I could have found books, which I couldn't, I couldn't afford to have them. So for those of you that, that may be in similar positions, I would like to open up this resource to you. If you're able to have a computer or get to a library and, and watch some of these these uh, these teachings, then I, I really, really want to welcome you and invite you to do that. Um, I've got about eight minutes, so if there's somebody who wants to call in, uh, the number is 347-934-0026. Um, the dark night of the soul is a real thing. Uh, when things start to fall away in your life, when when your life just starts to take on a really crazy theme, as I said, when the reality matrix falls apart or begins to crumble, and you'll see it first in the peripheral vision, if you're if you're getting a visual like I do, if you're getting a visual, then you'll you know the the, the deconstruction begins in the peripheral, and then it swings around into your central vision your central field of vision. So so know that, and as Amelia mentioned, you'll hear strange sounds, a lot of strange sounds. Um, you know, some are that are directly designed to frighten you. Don't get into it. And, and But also look for the source of the fear. Why is that strange sound frightening me? Is it just because it's something I don't know about? Is it just because it's a it's a... It's strange, and therefore it's strange, therefore I'm afraid. Well, you know, discern it out. You know, figure it out for yourself. Why do you have to be afraid? Is your is your uh, uh, existence uh, threatened by this noise that you're hearing? No. No, it's not threatened. Realize that. And once again, trust your kundalini. Trust your kundalini with your life, because literally... It has your life in its hands, and it wants you to live. It wants you to live. It wants you to live fearlessly. Hi, Grizzen. We have Marilyn on the line, and she has a question for you. Good. Hello, Marilyn. Hi, Grizzen. Hey, I are really, you the I one that, tell... that have, we, have we been communicating lately? Yep, same one last week. Oh, hi. Hi, Marilyn. Good to hear you. <laughs> Good to hear you, too. I've been watching your videos on YouTube, and I've really enjoyed, especially your DNS uh, videos. I thought they were just right on in terms of what I had been experiencing and what I needed to hear. I really thought they were just right on. I want to thank you very much for those. 
Well, congratulations for having the Kundalini to the degree that you can have a DNS. Well, I'm not sure about that, <laughs> because now I have questions about how you really know that the DNS is testing your fears, which I think it was at one earlier point, which I don't I don't know that it was really a DNS at that point, but how do, I, how do you know it's not really your negative karma that you are facing from this well, life well, and many lives that, that the DNS is, in a Chinese manner, all of a sudden throwing at you? You you are dealing with that. It's absolutely true. You're dealing with that karma. That's the point. You're dealing with karma that you cannot consciously uh, bring up for yourself because you weren't that person. You were another person. You were a different person. And that, that different person developed karma in that lifetime that had bleed over into this lifetime because of the Kundalini Awakening. So Kundalini reached back into levels of, of karma that have been accrued, but not necessarily in this life. And so well, some of it could be from this life, couldn't it? Some of it could be, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, all, it's, it's really about karma in general, whether it's been, whether the, whether the karma was achieved in this life or if it was given in another life. It's all about the karma, the collection of of balances that we need to take care of when we're within a kundalini awakening. This is why I'm I'm giving the safeties out, you know, and you and you that the person practicing the safety should be practicing tolerance, forgiveness, trust, honesty, you know, all of these really positive positive uh expressions so that even when you have the the DNS, even when you have it, it doesn't take you to the degree where where you're going to hurt yourself or hurt other people because you're so frightened. Well, I'm frightened of the negative karma that's appearing before me. Well, uh look at why you're frightened. Is it is it gonna is it gonna hurt you? It's leading to self alignment <laughs> and, I'm and sorry, some fun. I, 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 I missed that last word. It's leading to what? Solitary confinement and to financial problems. That's not a bad thing. Solitary confinement is a good thing, unless you're in prison. No, I'm not. Solitary confinement, solitary confinement is a is a wonderful place to to meditate and to get to know yourself in a way uh, that you would never be able to do with. ourselves through our relationships with other people. And the Kundalini is saying, no, no. Now you can divide yourself with your relationship to the divine. And that sometimes takes solitary confinement. But one of the one of the signals, uh, one of the signs of my DNS was that I seemed to have lost my connection with the divine or lost my awareness of the divine presence and I'm more likely dwelling in a perpetual awareness of an acute loss that I had before and I'm experiencing grief from that. Well, the, real, the, the, the scenario with that is that Kundalini knows that it has an amplification effect on people and their emotions and their, their fear and their love and and all of these levels of attachment, of emotional attachment that we can develop, it knows that it has an amplification effect. And so it can pull back as it brings you into these other levels of emotional balance, balance where, where, you know, these issues that you have are being worked on. So trust the Kundalini. It has never left you, and it won't. It's just not always going to be, feel tactile the same way that it has from the start. Okay? Yes. All right. Now, we're going to get cut off here. We're down to a minute. And I want to thank you, Marilyn. And Marilyn, let's go ahead and have that phone conversation. Would you send me an email? Yes, send I Send me an email with, thank with those numbers again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much. Thank yes, I would like that. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And everybody, everybody, uh, Santara and 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 uh, everybody who is listening now, who's called in, thank you for calling in. 
everybody who's listening in the future in the archives, thank you for listening. And uh, may you have a beautiful, blessed day uh, on this September 11th, 2013. Thanks for listening.